Hello and welcome to Storytime today here at Maynardville Public Library and I'm Miss Chante and I'm going to read to you today Parents in the Pig Pen and the Pigs in the Tub and it's by Amy Liveridge and Steve Kellogg. Parents in the Pig Pen, oh my! Pigs in the tub? Shoo! I think we're in for a treat. What do you think? It all began last summer when my little sister Millie left the pasture gate open. The animals got out and they saw us in the house. That sure looks better than the stuff they feed us, I heard one of our chickens say. Right, said Bossy the cow. They got no flies in there neither. Bah, the black sheep said. The flies in the barn this year are tough, enough to drive me nuts. They rounded up all the animals, and the next morning, Pa got up at four, same as usual, and he milked Bossy and he sheared the sheep, and he slopped the pigs, and he fixed the fences, and he harnessed the, har the work horses, and planted corn. Back in the house, he heard a knock at the door. I'm tired of living in the barn, says Bessie. I want to move in here with you. Ma had been up since four, too. She had fed the chickens and taken the ducks to the pond and weeded the garden and mopped the floor and fixed breakfast and done the laundry. Mary, come quick, said Pa. Bossy the cow wants to move in with us. Ma took the clothespins out of her mouth. I said it's all right with me. We're so busy. What's one more mouth to feed in the house? The next morning, when Ma finished the chores, the chickens followed her out of the chicken coop. The chickens sat down with me and Willie and Billy and little Millie and banged their forks on the water glasses. We want cornflakes! We want cornflakes, they chanted. All we have is shredded wheat, said Ma. We hate shredded wheat, squawked the chickens. What's going on in there here anyway, Pa asked. First bossy and now you chickens. The next thing I know, the sheep will want to move in too. You guessed it. Bah! the black sheep said, and without even a by your leave, as Pa said later to Ma, Ba, Ba, and her three cousins climbed the stairs and settled down the hired man's room. The sheep are going up the stairs. That's that was Jake Stewart. He was mighty surprised when he came in from the fields to spruce up for supper. For a few days, nothing much happened, but what with bossy mooing and the sheep buying and the chickens clucking, flapping around, they got awful tired. One afternoon, while he was picking up the mail, Pa felt a drowsiness coming on and when he woke it was the next day oh poor pa now ma she fell asleep everywhere we didn't mind it at home but on sunday she snores her snores shook the choir loft and rattled reverend dodge during the silent prayer Oh, that's not a good thing. The only one in the place who slept good was Jake Stewart. He counted sheep every night to fall asleep. 
Same number every night for sheep. <gasps> Were they in bed with him? Oh, no. Still, we probably could have kept going that way for a long time if it hadn't been for the drought. In July, no rain fell for four weeks straight, and the barnyard pond dried up. One day, Ma was giving little Millie a bath when she heard a commotion at the door. Your time's up, it's our turn, said one of the pigs. No, me, said another. I'm next, said the third one. Oh, you're fighting over the bathtub. Then they all took over the bathroom at once. Ma snatched up little Millie and flew. Calvin, she screamed. Calvin came quickly. The pigs are in the bathroom. Pa was thinking about the weather, if it looked like rain. Is he deaf or something? Said Buster to Spike. Must be, said Spike to Buster. She said the pigs are in the bathroom. Let's head for the house. <gasps> oh no! Later that evening, the horses were settled in front of the TV. Bossy had taken over my room, and the chickens were in Little Millie's, so the two of us were sleeping with the twins. Near daybreak, a dozen ducks woke us up. Which way to the bathroom, they demanded. Upstairs, said Willie. But the pigs were in there, said Billy. We'll see about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Quack, said the ducks, and they waddled off together. Next thing we knew, the pigs and the ducks set up an awful racket. Ma! Pa! Wake up! I screamed. It's a flood! Ma and Pa stumbled out of bed. Someone left the water on, said Ma. That's when the ceiling broke. Oh no! We retreated to the side yard. You know, Ma, I've been thinking, I said, seems a shame to waste our big old empty barn. Of course it is, says Ma, but yesterday Baba told me they're pleased with Jake's room and got no intentions to move. That's right, said Pa. Bossy the cow said the same thing. Not them. Us. I said, us, said Willie. You mean live in the barn? Why not, I answered. If they like the house so much, let them have it. Everybody started talking at once. You mean we would haven't have to cook for chickens every night? Or give up our rooms? Or take baths while the pigs are sleeping? <coughs> I'll watch TV with the horses. Come on, cried Ma and Pa. What are we waiting for? Let's start packing. Just a minute there, the pig called out as we were leaving. Who's going to wash our towels? Ask Buster and Spike, said Ma. They might do it. Then again, they might not. We drew straws to see who slept where in our new home. Little Millie got the chicken coop. Billy and Willie got the hayloft. And I got bossy stall. But Ma and Pa, they drew short straws. And they had to take the pig pen. 
I don't mind a bit, said Pa. They neither, said Ma. With no animals to take care of, we could pretty much do what we wanted. When it was sunny, we tanned in the chicken coop roof, and we swam in the barnyard pond, which was full again. On rainy days, we played in the hayloft. That looks like fun. Our neighbors were pleased to visit us in the barn. Only Jake Stewart stayed away. People say Jake never got over the shock of finding Ma and Pa in the pig pen. All in all, it was a good summer. But around about November, Ma got tired of knitting sweaters and Pa got tired of whittling Willie and Billy began to to bicker something fierce and little Millie joined in. There's nothing to do around here, whined the twins. We're bored, whined little Millie. Suddenly we heard a knock at the door. We're lonely, said Bossy. The house ain't the same without any people. The barn's not the same without any animals either, said Pa. There's no milk there's no cow to milk or sheep to shear or pigs to slop or horses to harness or chickens to feed or ducks to take to water, said Ma. We've been lonely too. Just then I had my second idea. How about if we move back into the house and you animals move back into the barn and start acting more like animals? Suits us fine, exclaimed the animals. Well, then, it's agreed upon, declared Pa. Praise heaven, cried Ma. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and I sure am mighty thankful. Me too. Us too, squawked the chickens. But before we move back, let's celebrate the holiday together up at the house. On Thanksgiving Day, we were disappointed to find that the animals hadn't kept house as neat as we might have wanted. But we cheered up when they welcomed us in clothes from the attic and called us to dinner. <gasps> the animals cooked for them! Hope you like it well done, said the pigs. Uh-oh, I think they burnt the dinner. The end. I hope you enjoy the story. Tune in next time.